Hey guys, what's up? So in this uh, beginning Django course, we're going to be looking at the latest version of Django, which at this point it is 1.11, which is a uh, 1.11, yeah, 1.11. All right, so this this release just came out, so it's still probably a little questionable. Now, in a previous video I did on the uh, Hipster Code YouTube channel, let me show you guys Hipster Code YouTube and Let's see, so I did a video on how to install Python and set up Visual Studio Code so you can actually write Python in your in an editor that's free and, and everything. So if you have never installed Python before, that's the video you wanna check out. Uh, it's how to install and set up Python. Hey so guys, I'm actually gonna so copy this link so I can provide it in the uh, description tab of this video that I'm creating right now. I'm just gonna use raw notepad to save this link here to do that. Hopefully I remember to do that. Um, so now let's look at Django. So why would you want to use Django? Django has been around for a long time now. Uh, it's not the flashy like uh, React or Angular that you hear a lot about, but you can actually use those technologies with React uh, with uh, I'm sorry Django. Uh, so just like um, you know Node.js being a server or Express.js being a server, uh, Ruby on Rails, MVC.net, uh, Django is the same thing. It's just all written in Python and it uses Python technology to create websites. Websites like uh, uh, Instagram. Uh, Pinterest, Reddit, um, several, a bunch of other major websites have all used Python as their stack of choice. It's popular amongst uh, West Coast uh, Silicon Valley startups because it's free. It's not like, you know, a big Oracle that backs Java or, or Microsoft with C Sharp. Uh, Python is really all just community driven. It's gotten a lot of support from Google, actually. Google built its entire stack on, on uh Python back in the 90s into the early 2000s and still use Python quite a bit. So uh, a lot of jobs though you'll see with, with Python is actually like scientific types. So you have to have like PhDs and, and they're doing a lot of advanced calculations, uh, machine learning and things like that with, with Python. So uh, even though it's a great language for beginners, it's also one of the best languages for the absolutely insanely intelligent. So um, and it's just a strong community too worldwide, not just in the United States, but also in Europe. Um, you look at some of the creators uh, like the creator of Flask or even Python himself is is, uh, is a Dutch uh, programmer who came to America. Uh, anyway, enough about Python and Django. But definitely check out that video to see how to install and set up Python because uh, in the next step we're going to actually use our install to go ahead and create our Django project. Um, now, in this uh, Django project here, what I want to do is uh, go ahead and uh, go into my folder here. So this is a folder that I've already created. It's in my tutorials folder under Django, um, and I'm going to type CMD. It's a shortcut to get to this folder from Windows. And here I'm going to use a uh, built-in feature of Python, which is virtual environment. Uh, and it's kind of hard to explain, but virtual environment is a special keyword uh, where the second argument, and the arguments are always separated by spaces, so the first argument is actually virtual environment. And it's short for virtual EMV, which is for environment. And then so that's the first argument, right? And then you have a space. Here's the second argument, which is env. Now this env is just what I like to call my environments, but you can call it whatever you want. You can call it dog or cat or anything. It doesn't matter as long as it's got like proper naming conventions. But you know, do something. Uh, you can do it similar if you want. But I do env, and then that's simply it. So when I by pressing uh, enter, it should work. Although that did not work. So now I'm going to try to do virtual environment with the Python command. Uh, and then say env. All right, so that is not good. All right, so this is uh, interesting. They've actually changed the, the syntax for the new virtual environment with the latest version of Python. So it's actually, in a lot of tutorials you'll see, you'll see um, you know people plan things perfectly, a lot of copy and paste. I don't do that in my tutorials, I'm real. Uh, I just went ahead and installed Python on a brand new machine earlier today, or maybe it was yesterday, but either way, I've never tried to execute this command until right now, but it looks like we have a new uh, keyword, which we're going to say uh, VNV, which I guess is short for virtual environment, and I'm now I'm going to say ENV, and that still didn't work. So maybe if I try to do Python hyphen M V and V ENV, okay, is that doing something? So yeah, the syntax has uh, has you know it, it changes from time to time. Uh, so now that is the proper way it appears. Let's hope it did something. Now I created this NV, env folder. So that is the brand new fresh way of being able to create a virtual environment in Python. Now you're probably asking, in fact, you probably asked from the moment I started, why create a virtual environment? And, and the reason why you do that is you're going to have 
a bunch of different Python projects. And if they're on the same machine, you do not want those projects sharing the same modules. Just as we've seen with Python 3.6 having a new way of doing virtual environment, if you have Python uh, projects that, that are relying on, on modules, you, you're going to have those conflicts. There's going to be changes as modules are updated and new versions come out, and projects just simply can't share those versions. A lot of times, you're, you know, people are running older Python code. Python 2.7's been been uh, Python 3 has been around for over 10 years now, but people still use Python 2.7 for that same reason. Like there's code that works and nobody's got time or money to rewrite it. And they do not want those modules shared with Python 3 modules because it would not work clearly. But that is like in short why you want to have virtual environment. So let's go ahead and CD into the virtual environment folder. And then we're going to CD into the scripts folder. And I'm going to type activate. And I'm going to spell it right this time, activate. Now you can see on the left hand side we have our virtual environment activated so we're good to go there. I'm going to cd back into the Django directory and here I want to say pip and you know what I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say Django admin you know what I can't do that I got to install uh, Django. So now we're going to install Django here so we're going to say pip install Django and this is going to grab the latest version of Django from the internet. It's going to uh, install it on your machine and then we're going to have uh, Django commands available to us so that we can actually create our first Django project. Now, one of the things that you're going to want to keep in mind uh, with Django is that uh, the project is like the entire container of an application. Uh, so if I was building something like reddit.com, my project is named Reddit. But I could have a bunch of different apps from within that project, one that might handle user comments, one that could handle like creating new threads and things like that. So um, that's what how Django is actually structured. You, you're going to create your project first and then from within the project you're going to have a bunch of apps. So in order to create our first project we're going to run a command called Django admin and then we're going to say create project uh, and we're just going to call this, uh, we'll just call this a music website. Uh, and create project is not the command, let's see it's start project I believe. So it's start project. So now if we look in here, you can see we now have this music folder, which is the name of our application. So if I CD into it, I have another folder called music. So by default, Django will create an app that uses your project name. And that app is special, unlike other apps, because it's going to have a few files in it that pertain only to that app and not other apps that you're going to add to your project. Let me go into Visual Studio Code. I'm going to open up I'm going to say new window because I already have this file folder open. I'm going to go into opening a folder into my Django music folder. I'm going to select that. And then now on the if I click the documents tab, I should be able to see that I have this manage.py file. This is a special file that um, you're going to be using a lot within your Django project in order to run your server and everything. Um, and then you have this main app. Now all apps have an init file and you can just uh, just disregard anything like that but it allows you to import um, the settings file I'm gonna disable the linter by the way I have a video on whether or not linter is, is necessary if you guys follow my other Chris Hawks programming channel which I think you should there's uh, over 60 some thousand people following me there uh, but here's the settings file and inside here um, this is where all your installed apps so these are the built-in apps that are by default but as your project grows you're gonna be adding apps to this um, and that's gonna be uh, something we'll look at a lot. And here's your templates directory. So Django comes with a built-in templates directory, uh, not directory, but a template engine, I, would, I should say. Um, now, by default, this thing uses uh, a SQLite database, and, and that may not be something that you actually want to do. Uh, but for this tutorial series, we're definitely just going to use a, a SQLite database to keep things as easy as possible. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, we're not going to touch on too much of this stuff right now. Um, debug should be true by default, so that way it gives you helpful error messages. And there we go. Now the URLs. This is the um, this is the way that Django finds different. Like it, it tells Django which page is being requested. Like in this particular case, this is a shorthand way of saying if I request admin, I want you to use uh, a URLs file that we're importing from directly within the Django project um, we're importing uh, this admin.site.urls is being imported right there and being used admin.site.urls so that's a special way of being able to uh, use URLs that are defined within another 
uh, project and that could be you know that's actually in the main Django installation directory but we're not going to get into too much of that you don't need to deal with that the WSGI file is actually a popular and important file because this is actually how servers execute Python code so if you run a server like Nginx or Apache or even IIS you're gonna have to have technology installed on those servers in order to be able to read Python code and in order to do that they use the WSGI standard which is really just uh, Python standard for how Python gets executed on servers. Uh, so all those files are going to be there in that main app and you need those. Um, so let's go ahead and continue on. If we go back to our command line here, we're going to actually be able to say MP, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Django, actually, we're going to say Python manage.py run server. And this is actually going to run our Django server. And you can see that it's listening on port 127 or it's really the, the address 127.0.0.1 colon 8000. So in order to get there, there's two ways we can do it. You go the easier way, which is localhost. You type localhost 8000, and that'll take you to your Django project, or you could actually spell out that long 1.7.0.0.1 colon 8000. Um, but the, either way, it's, just, it's the same thing. Uh, localhost just points to that, that address. So you can do localhost if that's easier to you. But you can see you already have a Django application running. So uh, that, that's pretty good, right? Um, let's go ahead and kill the server by pressing Control C. Um, now, I just wanted to get the Django project set up uh, within this, uh, this you know, initial tutorial of how you actually install Django, how do you run it, how do you how do you, you know, get it set up initially? Um, and in future videos, I want to actually integrate Django with, uh, with other technologies like using React, uh, possibly using Angular whenever I have time to do that. Um, also setting it up with different databases because um, a lot of people aren't going to go to production with a, a database uh, called uh, SQLite, um, which is a Python built-in database. Let me show you something here um, before we also uh, close this out. If we go to our admin, the server needs to be running. So if you get this message, it's because we don't have the server running. If I press my up arrow, it's short for typing what I just had. So now you can see that this thing has a built-in admin. So right now we don't have any sort of user created. So one of the things that we are going to want to do is we want to go ahead and go back to our command line and we're going to create our super user. So we're going to say python manage.py create super user. And this is going to be, um, what the hell? Oh, okay, so it looks like we have to create our migrations. So we're going to say Python uh, manage. In fact, you may not even have to say manage. You could just say manage.py, I believe. Yeah, that'll work. Just say manage.py, make migrations. And then now we're going to say migrate. All right, so what this just did is it created a bunch of uh, database tables that Django's authentication system needs in order to be able to uh, create a super user. So now that those tables have been created in our database, we can now go ahead and use that command that I just wrote, which is um, create super user. And let me get into a habit of just saying manage.py because I don't need to spell out Python. Um, so we're gonna say create super user. So now this is the process where it's gonna go through, it's gonna ask you to create a username. So I'm gonna have my username be you know what, I'll just make it be admin, and we'll just say uh, noobnitch at gmail.com. And then this is where you're going to create your password. All right, so now we have our super user created. So now if we go over to our login and we type in with our admin and then our password that we just entered, you're going to have access now to Django's, uh, oh shit, the site needs to be running again. All right, so we're going to start the server again all right admin all right and you can log in using those uh, uh password and everything you just created and you can see that here's my admin user he's the first user he has a staff status of question mark and as you create new users you'll see them in here and you can give them different permissions django has all the authentication that you need um, you can create groups um, so if you want to add a new group, you can add, uh, you can see from within here that uh, every app that you have installed in your project, you can allow people 
Like if you if you have a blog, certain people will be able to allowed to add blogs maybe, or maybe they'll be able to change blogs, but they won't be able to add new ones or delete, you know, but you can give individual permissions to different users from within your site. Um, and the best part about it is the code is already written for you by experts in the field and it just works, man. It saves you so much time over so many of the other frameworks out there. All right, guys, so that's really, that's, all, that's where I'm going to leave off on just getting uh, Django set up for beginners, you know, for, for Windows systems. And um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And also make sure you guys follow me on my other channel. Uh, I do have a, a popular channel, uh, which is Chris Hawks on YouTube. So many of, uh, many of the followers that are on this channel already know about that, but as I gain new ones, I want them to be aware of my other channel here. Uh, 62,000 people are following me over there, so make sure you guys uh, take a look at that. I appreciate it. I talk about all kinds of different things about being a programmer, how I got here, and everything else. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye. Hey, guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12 week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this, in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.